guys! Today I'm going to finally review the school. Yeah. yeah, it's about bloody time. I've been waiting bloody ages for this review. Yeah, and you fixed the pool, so I had to review it. The man's jugular vein was bitten clean through. The Skull came out in 1965 and is an Amicus production. It was directed by Freddie Francis and stars Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee together again. Although Christopher Lee just guest stars in this film. It was written by Milton Sabosky and Robert Block and it's based on the short story by Robert Block called The Skull of the Marquis de Sade. Music was by Elizabeth Lucchens and the film only runs 83 minutes and the final 25 minutes contains no dialogue. The film stars Peter Cushion, Christopher Lee, Patrick Wymark, Jill Bennett, Nigel Green, Patrick McGee, Peter Woodthorpe and Michael Goff. So this is one of the 22 films that Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee starred in. Although Christopher Lee doesn't have as much to do in this one as usual. It's mostly a Peter Cushion film. Christopher Lee is just in about three scenes. So Amicus was trying to rival Hammer Films by making a full feature production. And this is kind of like, has the similar style where they did a lot of short stories. Put them in one film. And this sort of like fails like one of their segments but extended into a, a feature film. It's got that same style. Which is a good thing. It's got that same eerie atmosphere, music. And it's interesting that this film's only 83 minutes. Like usually a film will be at least about 90 minutes. But this is only 83. And the last 25 minutes there's hardly any dialogue. So the film starts with a sort of a prologue. That shows them pinching the skull of the Marquis de Sade from the, the grave. And then the film starts years later in present day, the 60s. And yet you see an auction where you first say Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee. Peter Cushion eventually gets the skull and all this weird stuff happens. The skull can kind of like influence people to do actions that the skull wants. The moving skull spreads its freaking terror everywhere. Hey Phil, that's me! You always say that, Bones. You always say that's me when you say a skeleton. The auction scene's quite well done. Uh, it's the first time you see Christopher Lee and he actually plays a good guy in this one. Usually he's an evil swine, but he isn't in this. But this definitely is a Peter Cushion film. There's some great scenes with him in. He's brilliant at, at portraying figure with his eyes. So the, there's, lots of, there's lots of scenes where he's like staring, terrified at, at the skull. And Freddie Francis directed this film and he does terrific job with this film there's some brilliant point of view shots where the camera's actually looking through the skull at people i love that shot there's lots of close-ups as well he seems to like close-ups and it's interesting that there's lots of periods in the film where there's no sound or sound effects so he's brave at doing that a lot of directors would do that they'd be terrified that the audience will get bored if there's no sound like modern films, it's all crash, bang, wallop. But with this film, there's lots of periods where you just say your footsteps and things like that. And there's great scenes where you say the skull actually flying in the air. Even though you can say the wires, it's still it's still good, a good effect. So Freddie Francis did some terrific films. He's, he's a bit underrated, actually. A lot of horror fans go on about Terence Fisher. But I think Freddie Francis is just as good. He's done some terrific films, especially for Amicus Productions. He's done Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Dracula has risen from the grave for Hammer. Torture Garden. He's done Tales from the Crypt. The Creep and Flesh. Tales at Witness Madness. The Ghoul. Legend of the Werewolf. And that's just to name a few. So, a great director. There's a funny scene where you say Peter Christian and Christopher Lee having a game of snooker. And it, it looks really weird because, he, he, especially paint the cushion, you can tell he's he's a he can't play a snooker the way he's holding the cue. Hey, Phil, it's like watching bloody Ray Raiden playing snooker. Well, that's an extraordinary oh, shot there from the I world champion. Yeah, Bones. Ray Raiden used to be called Dracula, but this was before Ray Raiden started playing snooker. Yeah, hell, you can tell bloody Peter Cushion can't play a snooker. 
Look at the bloody way he's lining up his fucking shot. Seem to be having an off night. I've never played so badly in my life. There's even a surreal, sort of like a dream sequence in a way. I especially like the scene where Cushion's holding this gun and he's told he has to fire it. So it's like a scene out of the Digger Hunter where he has to do it at least three times. Another nice thing about this film is that there's some great sets. Like, the scenery and everything looks lush and expensive looking. And it even has a downbeat ending, which is always good. So overall, I thought this was surprisingly good. I used to think it was just an average horror film, but I really enjoyed it this time. It's probably one of the, the best directed horror films I've seen. Not necessarily the best horror film I've seen, but definitely one of the best directed. So out of 10, I'm going to give this one 9. 9 out of 10. Oh, what's happening? Something's taken over my mind. Instead of 9, I'm going to give it 10. Top marks, 10 out of 10. Oh. What do you think about it, Bones? Did you like it? That's the best bloody film ever made. Now you can review the second best film ever made. House on the Haunted Hill. <laughs> hey, Bones, listen to this. The Marquis de Sade's body was exhumed from its grave in 1814 and its skull was removed and subsequently lost and its fate remains unknown. Ha <laughs> ha! Now you know my true identity, Phil. And your subscribers. I'm the Marquis de Sade. Are you hell the Marquis de Sade? You bloody Harold down the road. <laughs> At least you used to be Harold down the road. Ah, you bloody ruined it, Phil. Bloody fucking hell. Bloody telling them I'm bloody Harold. Okay, everybody, bye. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Tonight's players come from group number three, and it features two very old favourites, Ray Reardon and Fred Davis. Oh, bad luck. And so it's Ray Reardon. Well, how could you possibly know that? Never taken any notice of superstition before. Exactly. Welcome again to Pop Black 77. Tonight's players...